Hey, welcome to Mysterious Destinations of Idaho. I'm your host, Brett, and we are the Southeast Idaho Paranormal Organization. And our members here today, we've got Nicole, Scott, Lisa, and our co-host, John. CPO is a paranormal investigating organization who is based in the social sciences. Each one of our members has some educational background in one of the fields of social sciences. I myself have a bachelor's from Idaho State University in cultural anthropology. I also studied at the University of, uh, the University of Guadalajara in Guadalajara, Mexico. Um, and each one of our members is now going to tell you a little bit about their educational background. I'm Lisa and I have been studying at ISU and also uh, studying it in uh, sociology. Uh, my name is Scott Bryan and I received a bachelor's degree in anthropology from Idaho State University and then later I was able to attend graduate school studying Mesoamerican archaeology at Brigham Young University. I'm Nicole and I studied anthropology at both ISU and BYU. And I'm Brett, and I studied sociology at Ricks College and here at Idaho State as well. And now we'd like to get into TP Toys, and uh, the, it was such a wonderful building that we're going to, first of all, show you a clip of some of the history of behind that building. All right, so here we are out front of uh, the TP Toys building down here on First Street. Uh, this was initially a well Fargo Wilson Wells dry goods store. Uh, it was owned by a family that had some uh, British origin, uh, which makes uh, one of our EVPs very significant that we got. Um, and the, then over time, in 1916, it was, or excuse me, 1918, it was uh, sold to a, a dairy. It was Mutual Creamery Company. And then in 1945, it was sold to Mutual Creameries of America. Uh, my dad, growing up in Pocatello, his boy, he remembers it being a dairy down here. Uh, so I thought that was, and he told me that on his own free will. So I thought that was kind of cool that collaborates our story here. Um, and of course, then in 1982, Pollard's purchased it and became TP Toys for him. Okay. In the early 1900s, First Street was actually a very violent place. Uh, at that time, you had a lot of different groups coming into Pocatello due to the railroad. One of the groups that came in were the Chinese. And in fact, when we were doing research on this building, we came across an interesting story. In the very early 1900s, in these alleys near First Street, we used to have the Chinese railroad workers who would build their little shanties in this alley right here. Again, as we mentioned, it's a very violent place. These were people that had been displaced, they didn't really have a home, and they didn't really belong in the American culture or in the culture here in Pocatello. Uh, in the early 1900s, there is a newspaper report that a man by the name of Chin Singh, who again was a Chinese uh, railroad worker, had built his shanty home in this alley. Now, he uh, was an older man and he had actually tried to commit suicide several times but people that were living with him had always stopped him but one day when he was all alone he actually doused himself with kerosene and lit himself on fire and he literally burned himself to death and his little shanty that's kind of the violent acts that have happened in the past in these alleys and around TP Toys Warehouse so we're right here at the railroad across the street from the TP Toys Warehouse. And the train was the great method of how people came into Pocatello. Uh, of course, they had passenger trains, but many immigrants, you name the culture, came into Pocatello via the train. So Scott, what do you think about this history? Well, um, I really learned a lot through this investigation with the uh, many different groups that um, were coming in through the railroad. and. Um, you know, there's some sad stories there, but also there's a rich history there. And a lot of that history is even being built today through the family that owns the building, the Pollards. And in fact, uh, they've had many experiences themselves. My name is David Pollard. Uh, we're standing here in our uh, family warehouse uh, down on South First in Pocatello, Idaho. Um, my father bought this warehouse in 1982. I remember uh, when we first bought it, we were looking for a 
a place to store a bunch of the merchandise that uh, he bought through the years. Uh, we have had two retail stores here, and, and um, in 1984, we actually turned this warehouse into uh, TP Toys, which my brother Don ran here for um, 10, 12 years before we moved over to the Westwood Mall. And Westwood uh, Mall, uh, about the same time. And uh, so this building uh, has been part of our family for a long time. Uh, a lot of us kids have stored uh, personal stuff down here as well. And um, it's a, really a rather unique building. When we first bought it, it had been the home of Metal Gold uh, Dairies. Uh, they made ice cream and uh, did all sorts of distribution of their milk products out of this warehouse. When we first bought it, uh, I remember coming down and cleaning it out. We had to get rid of all of the different stuff that they used to make uh, all the milk products and um, so it's just been uh, kind of an interesting transition from from that to our family business and uh, but anyway being down here on South First it's right next to the railroad track so we've all we've all uh, experienced uh, a lot of weird noises down here uh, being next to the tracks we hear the the trains uh, go by a lot uh, get a lot of uh, undesirables uh, coming by, uh, hitching rides with, on the trains, and they end up here in the warehouse. So you got to kind of be careful when you come down here and make sure um, you're usually not alone. Uh, but it is kind of a scary place, especially at night when you're by yourself. Uh, I usually try not to come down here by myself because there's a lot of weird noises, and uh, I got to admit, voices sometimes that kind of make you want to get in and out as soon as you can. During the day, it's not too bad, but uh, there's definitely a lot of uh, strange noises that uh, are, are here in this old building. You know, this was definitely our our, you know, our father's and our grandfather's business that we're growing up. We're, we're I'm one of the grandkids of the Pollard family, and uh, you know, coming up here and trying to you know clean it up a little bit, uh, make it into something maybe a little bit better has definitely kind of made me a little uneasy at some points. Uh, you know, it's hard for me to come down here work by myself, even though you know I'm a grown man. A lot of times you'll hear noises, you make sure, you know, you feel like here's some, you know, sometimes it sounds like somebody's walking up the stairs or someone's banging on the pipes. And it just gets a little uneasy at sometimes because we have heard of people being in here. Um, so every once in a while you feel like, you know, maybe somebody could come in, uh, could walk up those stairs, you know, just cause a little bit of ruckus of some sort. Whether or not it would just be somebody pushing a box around. You know, it does get a little uneasy at some points. It happens a lot of times. Like you said, you know, I'm not going to come down here at nighttime. Um, typically, we only come here during the day. And, you know, normally when we come down, we make sure we're in pairs, so it's a little bit easier to, you know, definitely you know, get some more progress done, get some work done. Because if you're not up here with pairs, normally you're sitting here, you know, listening to all the noises and all the silence. And it can get a little uneasy and a little, un, you know, a little stressful at some point in time and you don't you don't get as much progress. Oh, my name is Dirk Pollard. Uh, my dad is uh, Don Pollard, the, the man that uh, opened up Party Palace for TP Toys um, here in this building. Um, of course you can see this is one of the rooms that my cousin stayed in. Um, he's got most of his stuff here. Uh, you know I kind of heard a little bit about um, some of the stuff that kind of went on here. Uh, I know that he, my cousin's had a couple of nights where he's had to actually uh, you know, thought that there was somebody here. Um, Alright, my name is Dallas Strang and I've uh, basically been coming to this warehouse ever since I was a little kid. My brother built a, uh, a studio that we play, practice a lot of music in, so I would come here by myself to practice music and a lot of times I would, it would sound like to me that somebody was up here walking around or somebody was up here talking, so I would uh, come up here to check things out and I wouldn't see anybody and it usually, it freaked me out so I'd call up a buddy and we'd we search the entire place because we have had people break in, show up, and um, you know, open the room and get things you know going. Right. And I'd start flipping on lights, and I'd hear like, it, to me, it sounded like somebody was up here walking around talking to somebody else, mm -hmm. and it freaked me out because I'd be like, I'd come up here and I wouldn't find anybody, and you know, and then my brother would show up and I'd talk to him. Just and like, then hey. um, another time, I was standing down by our elevator, and it looked like I could see a silhouette of somebody standing there, but it wasn't a full shadow, it was just like a silhouette of somebody's shape. And I came up here and I obviously couldn't find anything. And um, I mean, there's a lot of noises and crazy things that go on in this place. I pretty much just learned to kind of tune it out or just 
let it be the haunted creepy warehouse. The Pollard families had some very interesting experiences in that building, and we also had some of our own. Uh, the females in our group, what experiences did you have? Well, it's interesting to note that Nicole and I like to team up and do investigations together. And we've started noticing that there's kind of a pattern going on where either um, the females will have all of the experiences or, or many of the experiences, or else it'll be the men. Lisa and I really enjoyed investigating, but we didn't have any uh, paranormal activity. We didn't record anything and we didn't have any experiences. However, the men's experiences started as soon as we walked in the door. John, can you tell us about that? Yeah. The first experience that we had was um, when we first walked into the building. We walked into the building, and I have a quick clip that, that I'll explain it, but quickly. Uh, when we opened the building to begin the investigation that night, I believe that I saw a shadow or a figure of a person looking around a corner all the way down at the end of the uh, hallway in the building. And what was interesting is that it was the same experience that some of the Pollard family members had had. So we had had a similar experience without talking to each other. And uh, so we'll just show uh, a little bit about what my experience was. When we were here uh, the night of the Haunted History Tour last October, uh, we were outside and uh, as we were just finishing up our, our part of the program, or part of the tour of this particular building, uh, my children that were with, standing right by me at the time, noticed some, a figure up in the window. They both saw it, a white figure. They, they, Scott, John, and myself, we each were guides on buses. We got on and uh, we had different individuals tell us that they saw it too. Now the interesting thing about this, is, besides being on three different buses, if you look at the height of these windows, as you can tell by just my standing here, I'm only, you're only going to get about my head, maybe, looking down into the street. Nations. As Brett talked about, his children thought they had seen a figure up in these top windows here. That in itself would have been interesting, but we even had more. Not only did Brett's children believe they had seen something, but right here during the tour we had our buses parked. Many of our guests, when they had gotten back on the buses, were looking and they saw either what they described as a white light or a white figure up in these top windows here. Again, I would estimate that there was probably in the number of between 40 to 60 people that also reported on our tour seeing something up in these windows. Again, described as a white light or a white figure. When uh, Brian asked me if he could uh, do an investigation here at the warehouse, I thought it sounded like a good idea. Like I said, we've heard lots of strange stories and lots of strange noises being down here. But uh, I wanted to meet him during the day so I could kind of show him around. There's a lot of stuff. Uh, didn't want him tripping over stuff and getting hurt. We have an elevator shaft and, and uh, steep stairs. So we came down earlier that day to, uh, you know, do this walkthrough. And uh, I showed him the first floor here. This is basically a two-story warehouse. Showed him the first floor. And uh, we went to the back, uh, back there. That's where yeah, like, one thing we we make sure we do is don't leave the warehouse with the lights on so there uh, quite a few lights on and I know I shut the lights off and then we went upstairs I showed them around upstairs and uh, we had an opportunity to you know, uh, check out different places in the warehouse I wanted to be safe uh, you know about the night of the investigation I had a pr uh, interesting personal experience um, when we got here to the building it was about 10 15 at night and when we walked into the building, the first thing that we noticed is that one of the lights in the back of the building had been turned on. Now, I had not been on the initial walkthrough, but I'd been told by Scott and the others that the lights had all been shut off when they had left the building from the initial walkthrough early in the evening. As we all kind of walked in, then we all said, okay, well, this is what we're going to set up. And everybody turned and went this way. 
they headed out to get more equipment. As I was standing right here, I distinctly saw a head and shoulders come around the corner in the back of the room where the light was on. I saw a distinct head and shoulders peek around the corner about where the elevator shaft is back there. Now that night, it was, of course it was nighttime, it was dark, but I saw the shadow of a head and shoulders come around the corner very quickly and peek out. Standing down by our elevator, and it looked like I could see a silhouette of somebody standing there, but it wasn't a full shadow, it was just like a silhouette of somebody's shape. And I came up here and I obviously couldn't find anything. And I didn't see features, I didn't see if it was a man or a woman. I just saw a very quickly a dark head and shoulders come around the corner like this and take a peek at us and then pull back very quickly. That was a very unique experience that I had and I had never had an experience like that before. I know what I saw, I just, even today, I don't know exactly how to interpret it. You know, it's interesting too, John, you know, in the 36 years that I've known you, I, you know, we've, we've been through a lot, we've done a lot of, lot of stuff, but I've never seen you as shaken up as you were at that, that night. And so I, I know whatever it was that you saw definitely was something that definitely freaked you out. But uh, rolling into our investigation, we want to present some of our EP, EVPs that we've collected. Um, we're going to play this first one for you now, which Scott and I were, were doing, and uh, we'll just play that now and go from there. My name is Scott Bryan, and I was here on the night in October when we investigated this TP Toys warehouse. Uh, one of the experiences I had, again, was collecting an EVP. And again, uh, like other EVPs we had uh, found that night, it seemed to be of a woman. It was at this location that Brett Yost and I were investigating. Now, throughout the night, we felt very comfortable in this building. Um, my wife and I had investigated up on the second floor, hadn't really felt anything. We had heard some strange noises that we couldn't explain, but again, we weren't prepared to say that was paranormal. So into the investigation, me and Brett decided to provoke a little. And we're not real mean when we provoke, but we start to ask some very pointed questions. And it was at this time that I decided to ask whoever was here if they had had an abusive father. And I said to them, did your father hit you? And on my uh, digital recorder at that time, we received a very clear EVP that simply said, hit me. And that was found again in this area of the TP Toy Warehouse on the second floor. Hit you. Now that EVP clip that me and Brett caught, we really believe that it says, hit me. And again, I found that very significant because, again, I had just asked that question, as you heard, uh, has your father hit you? Again, uh, trying to provoke just a little bit. Uh, but again, to get a direct response uh, to a question that we're asking uh, really goes a long ways in saying that there is something happening at the TP Toys warehouse. Uh, but really, uh, Brett, you even had a better experience that night. In fact, it's probably one of the best um, pieces of evidence we've ever caught in any investigation around Idaho. Yeah, that's true. Um, you know, it, between your, the EVP that you caught and the EVP that I captured, I think it really shows that there's an intelligent interaction going on. And uh, this next clip that we're going to play for you is uh, very... Still one I just, I, I'm proud of it. It's my first EVP I caught. We're going to go ahead and play that clip for you now. So this is the spot where uh, I picked up my first actual EVP since I've been part of this group. Uh, we're right here up on the second floor of the TP Toys Warehouse. Myself and Ryan were just right in this very spot. I was just walking along looking at shelves that were here at the time. And uh, what I didn't know as I was admiring some of the things that were on the shelves is that we picked up an EVP of an individual speaking to me. And we're going to play that clip. Yeah, train break, definitely. 
Mm. I had to line it up here. <laughs> Yeah, well, you got yourself a headboard for that air mattress he has in here. And you can watch Jungle Book on video. <laughs> yeah, I just saw Book of Mormon on TV. And uh, was it, it was interesting because Ryan was right here with a camera, had audio on it, didn't pick that sound up at all on that camera. And right around the corner of the shelf, we had our DVR system camera set up here with audio on it, and it didn't pick anything up either. It was just on my digital recorder that I had with me at the time. So we considered this EVP to be some of the best evidence we have ever collected, simply for the fact that it seemed to be a direct communication to Brett. Uh, the recorder that Ryan Denning had did not pick up the voice, nor did the DVR camera that we had stationed right next to him. The voice only appeared on Brett Yost's recorder. So was it a message to Brett? There was no chance of contamination. There was only one female in the building at the time, and she was down on the first floor. And sound does not pass through these floors. It's a very, very solid building. Um, the thing about it that was neat for me is that was my first EVP that I've picked up as part of this group, as I said earlier. And, uh, So that clip really was something else. It's definitely, in, our, in the time that we've been doing this, one of our most clear EVPs that we've gotten. For me personally, that was my, as I've said in the video, it was my first EVP that I, that I actually picked up on my recorder. And it was really cool to be able to experience that. I remember John calling me and saying, Brett, you've got to get over here and listen to this, as, as he was analyzing the evidence. And at first I was a little creeped out, i got to admit that. But as I sat back and listened to it more and more, it just made me realize that with the nature of what we're doing, that there are interact, there's an interaction going on, and it, it really helps back up what we do. This experience has actually earned Brett the nickname of Dr. Love. <laughs> yeah, Dr. Love. Right. You could say <laughs> I found my soulmate. <laughs> All right. But not just me, because everyone heard this EVP. I just want to know... We'll just go down the, the way here and just get everyone's opinion. Let's start with you, John. Well, one thing I wanted to bring up is um, one of my positions, one of the things that I do in CPO is I analyze a lot of the uh, recordings that we do. I analyze a lot of the video. Uh, there's only been a very few times when I've analyzed, um, you know, audio recordings, and I found uh, things that just floor me from the second that I hear them. Uh, probably only once or twice ever have I heard something as clear as that. I remember reviewing that recording and then just saying, wow, am I hearing what I'm hearing and recording it oh, or re rewinding it over and over again and saying, yes, I am hearing it. I am hearing it. And I remember giving you that call and saying, Brett, you have got to hear this. Uh, again, I, I was floored when I found that EVP when I was re reviewing that recording. Lisa, how did you feel about TP Toys? You know, <laughs> TP Toys was one of my favorite Goodness. investigations. Um, Nicole and I had a really good time. Like she said before, we didn't really have any personal experiences and we didn't really catch anything, but we just enjoyed being in the building. We never felt like um, afraid or insecure at any time, like we were, you know, there was something there that would harm us. Um, we just had a really enjoyable time, an enjoyable time with the team. And the thing that's really interesting is that a lot of times when you're doing an investigation, um, you don't really feel anything, but afterwards you catch, um, you catch things on tape or you catch things on EVP, and that's when the realization that it doesn't really have to be a kind of a, a thing that you're kind of setting up or planning. It just kind of happens, and it's really um, fascinating to me how that works. Um. TP Toys for me is, is I'm going to remember it as an investigation I really learned a lot. Um, first of all, John, you had that experience where you saw that shadow. Now, we did not know when you had that experience that a member of the Pollard family had had a very similar experience where he described almost the exact same thing you saw. And to me, that just taught me a lot that 
uh, there are things happening. I mean, we talk about, is, are these things a coincidence? Are the things we're just making up in our minds? But again, here was a, an example of a person that had an experience, and then you come in, you have another unique experience, and yet they're so similar. It really tells me there's something going on in TP Toys Warehouse. Well, and that brings up another point that J Brett's EVP actually correlated with some of the history that we, we didn't know anything about the building when we investigated. But later on, when we investigated the history of the building, uh, a family who had immigrated from uh, England were the ones that actually built the building. So the, the, the word lovey and the British accent in the EVP actually had significance that we were not aware of be, you know, when we first started the investigation. Yeah, that was my favorite thing too, was just how everything came together so well. The experience, the research, and then our experiences. I, th I really think that that's what validates w why we do what we do. Um, it certainly makes for a great investigation. We've had several, and this is certainly in my top three of, the, of the, what we've investigated so far. Uh, and I think, uh, again, you know, it's another play instance like Ender's Hotel where we just all felt comfortable, had a, enjoyed it, and had a great time. Um, and then when we go back and re review the evidence, then there it is. Yeah, it's amazing so. the stuff that you find in your own backyard. I mean, this is, again, why we love to do this and why we're not just ghost hunters, but we're really doing history here. Because you never know what you're going to find, uh, find in your own backyard. Mm -hmm. So we just want to thank you again. We had another great, great time uh, presenting this to you. And we'd especially like to thank the Pollard family for allowing us into the building to investigate it. And Old Town Pocatello, they've been a big help to us as well. And also, we, all, we always invite you, the public, to have, if you have any questions, comments about what we're doing, in, any input at all, we welcome that. And you can just address us at seipo.org, cpo.org, with any of that information. Sing, 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 sing,